Okay, hi there. Welcome to a special series of five short videos looking at the key stats on the UK economy to help you in your 2022 exams. We'll break, uh, break these stats down into five topic areas, some key information that you can use in your exam to help you uh, provide great contextual application that gets you those, those extra marks and the grades you need. In the first video, we'll take a look at economic growth and jobs. So the GDP, uh, the GDP of the UK fell in real terms by just under 10% in 2020, of course. That was the inevitable result of lockdown and uh, the pandemic restrictions, which caused a steep fall in the value of the national output of goods and services. So GDP fell by nearly 10%. That's the key stat to remember. In 2021, of course, there was a recovery, uh, initially, especially after the second lockdown had come to an end, and GDP grew by about 6.8% in 2021. So we've recovered most of the ground uh, that uh, we lost during the, the first year of the pandemic. The IMF is forecasting growth of 5% for 2022, although that growth forecast might be optimistic, given what's happening, of course, in the world economy, events in Ukraine, and the steep increase in, in world commodity prices. But here's the, here's the data, minus 10% in 2020, plus 7% in 2021, and a forecast growth of 5% in 2022. Now, what about jobs? What's happened to the unemployment rate? It's a great stat to bring into your answers. While there were fears, of course, that unemployment would surge to very high levels as the economy shut down in 2020. And indeed, unemployment did rise. It rose to 5.1%. In the, in the late autumn of 2020, but the increase in unemployment was mitigated, was offset by, of course, the furlough scheme, which helped to subsidise millions of jobs. I think up to 11 million people were furloughed at some point during the pandemic. So unemployment peaked at 5.1% of the labour market and has fallen steadily since to just over 4%. Unemployment is currently 4.1% of the labour market. It's going to be pretty tough to get it below 4%, especially, as we know, 2022 could be a tough year for the economy. And, of course, much of the unemployment that's left is long-term in nature and structural in nature. But unemployment is currently 4.1%. Now, what about job vacancies? This is really interesting. Job vacancies are jobs that have been notified as being available, but are not yet filled. They have reached a record high of 1.2 million people by the end of 2021. Let me show you a chart. This chart shows the number of vacancies in the UK economy. Look what happened a decade ago during the financial crisis in 2008. There was a steep fall in vacancies, and then they gradually recovered. Uh, and uh, they were about 800,000 as we headed into the pandemic. Obviously a collapse during lockdown, but since then, can you see what's happened? The number of job vacancies has soared. Lots of industries finding it very hard to get the workers they need, from health and social care, to transport and logistics, to farming, uh, to engineering, and many other, uh, many other occupations. 1.2 million people, uh, sorry, 1.2 million jobs currently unfilled. Uh, that is a key feature of the UK labour market. The labour shortage issue is one that you should really be revising as part of your exam preparation. Youth unemployment. This is a particular concern to many people, people who are aged between 16 and 24 years of, of age. How many of them are registered as out of work? Well, the figure is 11%. And uh, that figure has been falling in recent times. And uh, the good news is youth unemployment did not rise as much as we feared during the pandemic. So 11% in the UK, 11.2% in December 2021. But this chart is interesting. It shows the regional variations. So Scotland has a relatively low youth unemployment rate of 6%. So too Northern Ireland and Wales, well below the UK average. Whereas London has an, as a youth unemployment rate of 18%, significantly above the UK figure. And the North East, too, is also high in that respect. So if you get a question on youth unemployment, keep in mind there are big regional variations in the data. And what about long-term unemployment? Finally, the, first, the final chart in this first video. Now, long-term unemployment 
uh, represents people who have been out of work for at least one year. And that figure is 410,000, according to the latest data that I can find. This chart shows the number of people unemployed in the UK by length of joblessness, how long they've been out of work for. Uh, the blue line is people who've been out of work for up to six months. That's essentially short term unemployment. And you can see that surged, obviously, in the, in the early months of the pandemic has now fallen back. The orange line is people out of work between six and 12 months. Again, falling. Long term unemployment, though, however, is still is rising now. So there's a, a core of just under half a million people still in the UK who've been out of work for at least a year. Now, please keep that thought in mind. Unemployment is low, 4.1% of the labour force, but a sizable percentage of the unemployed have been out of work for at least a year. And that is a structural problem that supply side policies and other, other interventions uh, need to continue addressing. In our second video, we'll take a look at some key indicators on inflation and living standards.